Tonight, the state's No Pokies crusader continues his fight and some interesting figures on the employment front. Hello again, thanks for joining us. Also tonight, a book released on Port Augusta's Davenport community and a big weekend for Port Pirie's Greek population. But first tonight, protests against poker machines in Wyala is still very much alive. Marty Westphalen spoke with Nick Xenophon, who continues his opposition to the machines. No pokies independent, Nick Xenophon visited Wyala yesterday as part of a campaign promoting a fairer deal for regional areas. Mr Xenophon's drumming up support across South Australia for the Gambling Industry Regulation Bill, which is currently before Parliament. Poker machines really are the electronic locusts of regional centres such as Wyala. Poker machine losses uh, on the latest figures available indicate something like $7.6 million a year is lost on pokies. Churches, community and welfare groups have shown a commitment to Mr Xenophon's anti-gambling campaign and will help establish a working party when he returns in August. The amount of money going to charities, into uh, fundraising activities uh, that there were previously has been significantly affected because of poker machines and that's something that needs to be redressed. Mr Xenophon is rallying for increased funding for problem gambling support services as country regions often miss out on metropolitan services. Regional areas have really been left behind in terms of poker machine losses, they've been left behind in terms of the provision of services and regional centres such as Wyler are doing it tougher than the metropolitan area. The economic impact of poker machines on families, individuals and small businesses is particularly concerning in regional centres. Mr Xenophon says Wyala needs to lobby the government and push hard to get results for this community. At the moment, Wyala contributes something like $3.5 million a year in poker machine taxes and uh, I don't think Wyala's seeing much of that uh, in return. So it's very important that Wyala gets a fairer share of pokies taxes. Marty Westphalen, Central News. The Northern Regional Development Board is aiming for 70 job outcomes this financial year under the Employment SA scheme. And yesterday the state government committed $185,000 to the program with Employment Minister Mark Brindle signing the contract. While the funding is up on last year, the job target is also higher after the board easily achieved its 1998-99 goal of 60 jobs. The funding will cover four programs including Kickstart and the Working Towns Initiative. Opportunities for employment in Wyala and Air Peninsula have been enhanced by the continued growth of the Career Employment Group. More apprentices and trainees are employed than was ever thought possible. When I took this job on 11 years ago, I uh, envisaged that the region would support around about 200 apprentices and trainees. Here we are at 340, and I'm now thinking that perhaps by the end of the year, maybe over 400. Employment Minister Mark Brindle and Member for Grey Barry Wakelin helped open CEG's new office yesterday. Growth over the last 12 months meant the group could no longer operate from its Essington Lewis site. We've grown from our core business uh, from 160 employees uh, to 340. Uh, our staff has increased from 9 to 16. And uh, obviously it's also uh, much, much better for our job uh, network uh, clients. It's had a, a history of struggle with employment because it relied on a couple of traditional industries, but it's spreading out. It's diversifying, and I think, you know, when you start off by doing it tough, when it gets better, it gets a lot better, and I think Wyala can look forward to some good times again. The group works as a one-stop shop for employment, offering career advice, and work prospects for long-term unemployed through Job Network. The Apprenticeship Centre also offers employees advice on financial benefits of hiring apprentices. Groups such as these are actually at the forefront of showing young people not only are they good enough, they've got something special to offer the rest of the community. Part of CEG's growth is attributed to the supply of trainees for the fishing, aquaculture and retail industries. Career Employment Group currently provides more than 120 trainees and apprentices in over 70 vocations to employers in the Spencer Gulf, Air Peninsula and Far North regions. Marty Westphalen, Central News. Coming up next, Port Pirie's Greek community celebrates 75 years and Port Lincoln Council share plan.
most of us central. Palm World, Rose World, Silk World, it's huge and it's in Wyala. You won't buy it cheaper anywhere. Bare Root Bush Roses, $2.95 each or $8 for $20. Bare Root Standard Roses from $12.95. Assorted Ground Covers and Shrubs, $2.45 or $10 for $20. Assorted Ferns, $2.50 or $10 for $20. Loose Stags enough, $2.95 or $5 for $10. Cocos Palms, 6 to 7 foot, only $12.50. You won't buy cheaper because we're direct. The Old Coke Building, Ian Street, Wyala. It's all right. We travel as a family, particularly with a little one, that we're not right next door to other people. It's very clean and very spacious. We had everything that we needed so that we could cook our own meals. It was better than a hotel room because it was more spacious. We had two bedrooms. These luxurious self-contained cabins provide four-star accommodation and more. Cabin Park, Port Pirie. Jamestown and Peterborough Shoe Stores Winter Clearance Sale on now. Everything must go to make way for new stock. Cash or bank card only. Calling all business houses in Port Perry. Membership is now available to be part of the Flinders View United Traders Association. Join in the association and share the vision to lead, unite and develop the Port Perry area as the premier business and tourism region. Let's get business moving. Join the Flinders View United Traders Association. Contact Diane Robertson-Smith for your membership application and help start shaping Port Pirie's business future. Port Augusta's Davenport community is the focus of a new book. Titled An Aboriginal Village in South Australia, A Snapshot of Davenport, it aims to raise awareness of the community, its people and their lifestyle. It's not just a book about Davenport, it's a book based in Davenport. And at yesterday's launch, it was described as a perfect model on how research into Indigenous communities should be carried out. French author Dr Marika Moisif lived in Davenport from 1992 to 93, conducting interviews with the community and gathering information firsthand. For instance, how many people living in their homes and what type of um, food items they would buy on a weekly basis, uh, how many people living in their um, and visiting their um, houses during the year. Um, their um, family and tribal affiliations, their language groups. Funded by the Council of the Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies, the book includes chapters on housing, employment and education and health. It also highlights the significance of kinship to Aboriginal people and the need for the community to be involved in decisions affecting it. This book shows that um, all Aboriginal people aren't the same too. There's, from family to family, there's different likes and dislikes. This, and from where we come from, um, we come from different situations, and it'll definitely give um, the general population of Port Augusta, the people living in Port, um, Port Augusta, a chance to know uh, a lot more about their, Aborig their own Aboriginal neighbours. Owen McKenzie, who worked with the author on the book, says the accurate and detailed data will also strengthen submissions for government funding. Kerry State, Central News. The Port Lincoln City Council says it's the first council to implement a gain share plan as part of its enterprise bargaining with employees. The plan will give workers the opportunity to earn bonuses if council's performance improves across the board. This will be assessed using a point system, with workers receiving extra points for superior performance. Among the aims of the plan to reduce council's debt, employee accidents and leave, and improve the management of budgets. Town clerk Fred Pedler says while the plan gives workers the opportunity to earn a few extra dollars, they won't unless performance indicators lift significantly. Port Pirie's Greek community will host a massive festival this weekend to celebrate its 75th anniversary. Traditional food and dance will feature prominently with visitors arriving from Adelaide and interstate. The Greek community was officially founded 75 years ago in Port Pirie, the first in South Australia and only the third in the whole country. At one stage there were more Greeks living in Port Pirie than Adelaide. Historically, yeah, it has played a significant role, particularly in South Australia. And there's been uh, 
significant number of Greeks that uh, have lived at one stage here in Piri and have moved on. To celebrate the city's Greek heritage, a weekend of festivities has been organised, beginning with a dinner dance at the festival centre tomorrow night. On Sunday, the local church will host a divine liturgy with Adelaide's Greek bishop attending. Well, it's going to be a weekend full of uh, traditional Greek uh, festivities, which involve uh, Greek entertainment, singing, dancing, uh, of course, Greek food, um, from Suvlaka to Baklava, which is Baklava is one of the Greek traditional sweets. Following the service, the crowd of up to 500 will gather out the back where an abundance of Greek culture will be on offer with food, drink and dance. The weekend is open to the whole community and there's still a limited number of tickets available for the dinner dance. I think uh, you'd really miss out if you don't come because there will uh, be plenty of entertainment. I'm sure there'll be someone there that uh, you'd like to meet up that you haven't sort of met for a long time. Guests include Mr and Mrs Barry Wakelin, Mr and Mrs Rob Kerrin and Mayor and Mayoress Madigan. Weekend football after the break. Here we go, game two of the Socceroos against the 90 super team Manchester United. Capture the action, the excitement from Stadium Australia Sunday. The Socceroos versus Manchester United on Central. To sport now and the Western Division took out the Brett Ogle Pennants Match Play Cup in Port Lincoln today. Lower North came in second ahead of York Peninsula and Northern coming in fourth. The Junior Golf Tournament was held over 54 holes beginning yesterday and concluding today. Western Division will now play the winner of the Southern Zone team in October. To football and all is back to normal around the golf this weekend, first up we'll hear from Ken. Thanks, Travis. We have the match of the round in Spencer Golf League football at Port Pirie tomorrow. It's the match-up between Port and Solomon Town. The score standing at one all. Port won first up, then Solomon Town was able to reverse the result on May 22nd. Since then, Solomon Town has mixed its form, while Port has been right on track, winning all its games. The Bulldogs will be out to show it is the superior team. Can Solomon Town answer the challenge? At Port Augusta tomorrow and the improving Central has its chance to move into the four if Solomon Town loses to Port. The Bloods have a tough assignment as South is sitting comfortably in third position. This should be an excellent contest. Then to Corn on Sunday and the Wolves are at home to West. Despite this advantage, the West side is selected as the break will have allowed some of its players to get fully fit. And finally tonight, congratulations to Air Peninsula on their country championship win. It's across to Damien in Wyala. Thanks a lot, Ken, and a very interesting round of matches coming up this weekend in Wyala, and it starts on Saturday night at 6 o'clock, an unusual time to play because of the Crows match that afternoon, and it'll be the two bottom teams, West and North, although this match has special, special significance. West need to win it and win it well to keep their final hopes alive, and North, they're running out of chances to get their first win of the year. They've done very well against West during the year, and I think they'll give themselves a bit of hope of winning this match, but too much at stake for the Dragons, and they'll get across the line, although it will be a close game. And then on Sunday, there are two matches. The first at at Oval, Rupina and South. If South can win this, they can basically book themselves a final spot for 1999. And it's not statistically impossible for Rupina to drop out of the finals altogether if things don't go their way. Both teams had a loss in the last round, but I don't think Rupina can play as badly as they did, and they'll get themselves over a line in another close match, although South will have key players back for them. And then almost ironically, a match that has no significance on ladder positions, although it is the top two teams playing, so you could say it's the match of the day, Central Wyla and Maroona Bay. All that can come out of this game is premiership favouritism leading into the finals. A lot of people say the Bays are the team to beat, although Centrals aren't doing a thing wrong. They've only lost one match of the year. I can't see how you can go past them. They're playing great football and again they'll win, but in a very, very close game. Three very important matches this weekend in Wyala. Get out and support your team. And before we go down to Port Lincoln, bad luck to the Northern Cities team last week, losing to the Air Peninsula in the country championships. And isn't it funny how Beebs, in his report, didn't make one mention of the EP team, but I bet you it's the first thing he mentions now. Thanks, Juddy. And yes, you are dead right, mate. The first thing I'm going to mention is the, the EP team beat your Northern City boys in the first game of the country championships and then went on 
uh, to play South East in the final at uh, Footy Park last Sunday and defeated South East by seven points to, to take again the country championships. Back-to-back -back championships for the Air Peninsula boys. A uh, job very, very well done. And uh, all the people that were involved in that uh, effort, congratulations to them. The Air Peninsula is very proud of you again. Well, enough of that. On to the local footy last week. The first game saw Marvel Range defeat Tasmans out at Wongri in a pretty entertaining game. Tasmans have improved definitely in the second half of the season, but Marvel Range were just too strong in the end. The second game saw Lincoln South and Waybacks. Very good game up until half time. Lincoln South pushing Waybacks, but in the end, Waybacks proving their second position on the ladder is correct. They were too strong and took out the game. The third game saw Mallee Park take on Boston's. And this one was a bit of a walkover to Mallee Park. Boston's probably a little disappointed in their effort. And they uh, have found, struck, struck a little bit of trouble in the last few weeks. And uh, they need to really turn things around. Coming to this week's games, it's the last round. Yes, it's amazing. Only five games to go to the end of the season. The first game sees Tasman's take on Lincoln South at Centenary Oval. South still clinging to some chance of making the finals. Tasman's, well, they're playing for pride for the rest of the year now. But at this stage of the game, I think you have to tip Lincoln South because the game means more to them. Okay. The second game sees Waybacks take on the Boston's at Ravendale Oval. Boston's uh, have, I said, been a little bit disappointing in the last couple of weeks, but they have got injuries. But Waybacks, second position, doing very, very well. They've got injuries as well, but they've covered them a lot better than most other teams at this stage. I think Waybacks will be too strong and uh, beat Boston's out at Ravendale. The final game sees Mallee Park take on Marble Range. Now, this game was to be at Wongri, but has been shifted to Mallee Park because of an early shift in the year. Mallee Park are taking all before them. Gee, they look good. Uh, their running game is working. They've got plenty of firepower. Marble Range struggling with injuries. They've got a few long-term ones, but to even that up, Mallee Park have lost a few players uh, through clearances in the last couple of weeks. I'll tip Mallee Park to go on their winning way. And that's it from Port Lincoln Footy this week. Now it's back to Travis at the news desk. Thanks a lot, Ian. To soccer and the Northern Demons return to Burn Park for its clash with second-placed Enfield Falcons tomorrow. The Demons are coming off a good 2 all draw with Salisbury last week and are all prepared for the encounter. Port Perry City is in Adelaide against top team the Zebras. We'll be joined by Melissa Patterson and all the weekend weather details after this break. On 60 Minutes, SWATs, PRC, NRC, the new winners in the education race. They find it's fun to do it. Coached day and night. If they can do it, so can we. Why these kids are taking over our elite schools. These coaching colleges have worked out a way of busting the tests. Also, Liz Hayes roughing it. It's a boys club. It's a boys club. With the French Foreign Legion. We're the best, as simple as that. And Tom Cruise, those steamy love scenes with Nicole. <laughs> when Toyota presents 60 Minutes Sunday. Here's what Australia's leading motor... Australia's favourite balladeer, John Williamson, has a new album that tells it the way it is. Sons in their swags round the stock camp with me. Sing it in the rain. I've got 16 brand new tracks for you, folks. Campfire songs, coastal songs, love songs. An extraordinary musical journey. John Williamson, The Way It Is, out now. Save money on waste disposal. Use the reliable, economical services of Mid Northern Waste. Serving batteries, restaurants, retail, and households. Mid Northern Waste will arrange casual or permanent pickups using 1.5 to 3 cubic metre bins. For commercial or household waste removal, contact the professionals. Mid Northern Waste, phone 086 33 2422. At Aussie Auto Fit Tire Power, our motto is do it right the first time at the best possible price. Our fully equipped workshop and experienced staff caters for everything from general service and tuning, suspension, to brake overhauls including disc and drum machining. If it hangs off a car or fits under a bonnet, Aussie Auto Fit Tire Power can look after your needs with parts, batteries and shock absorbers at competitive prices. And remember, Aussie Auto Fit is your Berkeley Exhaust System Specialist. Tonight's weather is proudly brought to you by Evans Hourglass Jewellery. Free polish, free inspection, free quote on all necessary repairs. See the jewellery specialists, Evans Hourglass Jewellery. Hello everyone, a lovely day today with plenty of clear skies. Today's temperatures, a pleasant high of 21 degrees in Wyala, down to 16 in the Clare Valley. 
On the satellite photo, a weakening middle level cloud band is evident west of Tasmania. Another frontal cloud band can be extending, seen extending over southern Western Australia from a low further to the southwest. To the charts now, a high centred southeast of Tasmania extends a weak ridge across South Australia. A low south of Western Australia is moving steadily east and expected to be centred well south of the continent over the weekend. A series of fronts will move across southern districts of the state during the weekend also. And around the region now, in the Western Agricultural, fine apart from isolated showers about the west coast and lower air peninsula, mild with moderate to fresh northwest winds. Northwest pastoral, a fine, mild and mostly sunny day with chiefly light to moderate northwest winds. Northeast pastoral and again the same with a fine and mild sunny day and light to moderate northwest winds. Northern agricultural, a fine and mild to warm day with a little cloud in the south, moderate to fresh northwest winds. Central districts, cloudy with isolated showers, a mild day, fresh to strong northwest winds. And in Broken Hill, simply fine. Over the next few days, Western Agricultural on Sunday, scattered showers isolated in the north. Cool to cold, Monday showers will become isolated later in the day and Tuesday will be fine apart from isolated showers contracting to the coast and southern air peninsula. Northwest and northeast pastoral, fine apart from isolated showers developing in the south to Monday and areas of cloud with isolated showers in the south, cool to mild, then becoming fine on Tuesday with conditions cool to mild also. Northern agricultural scattered showers chiefly in the mid-north and cooler and the same on Monday with showers becoming isolated on Tuesday. These will contract to the mid-north. Central districts Sunday, Monday and Tuesday expect some showers mainly scattered and easing. And in Broken Hill cloud increasing with isolated showers developing. On Gulf waters, north to northwest winds at 12 to 17 knots, gradually increasing to 20 to 25 knots during tomorrow. Seas 1 to 1.5 metres, rising to around 2 metres. And the outlook northwest to west winds at 20 to 30 knots. Overnight, 6 degrees in Clare, up to 12 in Port Lincoln. And tomorrow, 21 for Wyala, 18 on Central York Peninsula. That's all from me for this week. Enjoy your weekend. Good night and here's Travis. Thanks, Melissa. And finally tonight, the Port Augusta Orchid Club is holding its annual winter show at the Coles Shopping Complex. 53 entries are on display, the same number as last year. The grand champion title was awarded to Jean Clark of Port Augusta for her Vander Orchid. She's been displaying orchids for around 16 years, but this is her first win at the show. The display will be open to the public tomorrow from 9 until 3, with the spring show being held in mid-September. And that's our news service for this week. From all the team, enjoy your weekend and I'll see you again on Monday. Good night.